I'm here at USAR 2014 at UCLA, and I'm fortunate to be speaking with you, Hui. Hi, good morning. Hi, morning. Uh, so, you're the creator of the famous knitter package, mm -hmm. uh, which I, happens to be one of the things that I discovered this year that has really changed my workflow. Mm, nice. Oh, fundamentally, absolutely. <laughs> uh, can you take me through a bit of the thought process and the philosophy of how you got to the creation of the knitter package? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it may surprise a lot of people, but uh, the major motivation when I wrote the knitter package is, was actually I I wanted to. I wanted to do my own homework uh, more conveniently. Really? <laughs> yeah. At that time, I was mainly using SWIFT, and I found that there were a lot of features missing in SWIFT. So, and it, it was pretty difficult to extend SWIFT. So I decided, how about just write my own package? Yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, that is you know, open source is about scratching an itch. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so. Knitter is interesting because, so you've taken Markdown, mm -hmm. which is a domain-specific language. Mm -hmm. You've taken R, which to a degree is itself a domain-specific language yeah. for uh, analysis. Mm -hmm. And you've merged them together. Mm -hmm. uh, were there any special challenges in getting it to work properly and in, in getting it to flow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, you know what? The first language that uh, Knitter supported was actually not Markdown. In the very beginning, it was LaTeX. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just like as with uh, Markdown was a much later feature in, in Knitter. Yeah. In terms of combining them together, the idea is, n is not new at all. It was in the design philo philosophy of s mm -hmm. which basically combines R and LaTeX. And uh, later, I just added more languages into the design of Knitter, including LaTeX, HTML, Markdown. Yeah. So, and, and just to make sure I understand, these mm -hmm. all stem originally from Knuth's literate programming. Is that yep, correct? Yep. Cool. So, you know, what a lot of people are saying that Knitter is one of the components of the solution for reproducible research. Mm -hmm. uh, so, can you explain to our audience you know, what, what is meant by reproducible research? Yeah. In my eyes, reproducible research is basically like you give the, for example, if, you, if your research project evolves with like some data sets and uh, computer scripts, and if you just give these components to another person, he can just run uh, your scripts and get exactly the, the same results as yours. So I, I've been very interested in it. So reproducible research, I think, is one of those very important things for humanity. I mm -hmm. think that one of the great difficulties we have is the non-reproducibility of so much of the research out there. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I've noticed is that Knitter is fantastic at allowing you to reproduce mm -hmm. the final process, mm -hmm. the final step. Mm -hmm. But it does not allow you to understand the process that got you there. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't actually record any of that. Have you put any thought into maybe an extension of Knitter or mm -hmm. how it is that we will be able to capture the actual entire experimental process? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. I mean, I mean, the reproducible research, I mean, in Knitter, the reproducible research part is only in the final stage, I mean, the computation. Mm -hmm. Before that, I guess Knitter can do very little about that. For example, if you do some experiments, these, such as the bio, biology exper experiments, Knitter can certainly do nothing about yeah. this, <laughs> this process. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I saw you give a presentation to an R meetup, mm -hmm. and I believe you said that R is basically your primary programming language. Yeah, yeah. normally I say, I say that in this way. R, uh, Chinese is my first language, and R is my second language. English is, is the third. <laughs> Uh, well, so R is interesting. You know, we, uh, we had a presentation yesterday morning, I think as John Chambers was talking about how R is an interface language. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but you know, you're actually one of the people that is building real software in R. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me a little bit about what are your favorite parts of R? Like uh, there are a lot of parts of R that I really enjoy. I mean, for example, there are some uh, less well-known features in R, such as the lazy loading, mm -hmm. or some other graphics features. Yeah, it's it's really fun to play with R. I mean, you know, 
My, my first R package uh, is called the animation package. And, uh, you built the animation package? Yep. <laughs> oh, no way. I just used that last week. Oh, oh cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I mean, I guess everybody does this, but I just, you know, I split a data frame on year, mm -hmm. and then I, you know, plotted, and then I put it into animation, and I had a nice animated GIF. Mm -hmm. What was the reason for making that? It, it just came out of just for fun. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, normally we just see some static images, and as and, and one day I just thought maybe uh, I'm, the first animation I made in, in R was the Brownian motion, you know, <laughs> just the points moving randomly on the on the plot, and that was very easy animation. But it it, it was the uh, the first motivation of the animation package. Yeah. Cool. So. You're also, you know, pretty famous for really putting together the art community in China. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk to me a little bit about that and about the challenges of that? Yeah, uh, you know, the first art conference that I attended uh, was actually the one in Dortmund in 2008. That was in Germany, and uh, I flew from China to Dortmund and attended that use art conference. And I, I thought maybe we should just uh, start an. A, a conference in China as well. So just later that that year, in uh, I guess in December in 2008, I started the first Chinese art conference in Beijing. And uh, after that, fortunately, we have we have uh, a lot of volunteers uh, helping us to continue this this conference every year. Cool. So just in in May this year, we had the seventh uh, China art conference in, in Beijing. And we actually had uh, uh, 1,800 people registered for that oh, conference. Wow. Yeah, in terms of the uh, the number of attendees, it's much bigger than this our conference. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's incredible. That I mean, that is considerably bigger. Mm -hmm. um, so you've written. So I I didn't know that you've written the animating package. Mm -hmm. What other packages have you written? Uh, just a, a couple of uh, weird packages, <laughs> <laughs> like the uh, the format R package, which uh, allows you to automatically reformat your R code. You know, sometimes you write R code, you don't add spaces mm -hmm. around the operators, or you don't indent your code, which yeah. were which was talked about in uh, yesterday's uh, in Martin's talk. The the best R practice mm -hmm. yeah so you, you if, if you don't have the spaces or proper indentation in your code you can use the format R package to automatically reformat your R code so it's like a tidy for the language yeah yeah yep. okay so with knitter and with the formatter package mm -hmm. I'm, I'm noticing a trend you seem to build software that itself is consuming software and mm -hmm. integrating with it you're almost writing a meta layer of software mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, does that kind of uh, does that kind of coding appeal to you? Actually, treating R itself as data. Mm, yeah, that's also a fun part of R. I mean, uh, I'm I'm not a super smart computer scientist. I don't <laughs> I really don't know a lot of the low level stuff. So what I can do is to build my packages upon other people uh, or on other people's sh shoulders. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, so you're also uh, I'm on uh, the Rdevel mailing list, mm -hmm. and you're very active on the Rdevel mailing list. Yep. Uh, I was going to say it's something that's interesting to me. You uh, you seem to be one of the one of the people that I've noticed that is is spanning almost all of the subcultures within R. Mm -hmm. When you look at R culturally, uh, mm -hmm. is anything about it interest to you? Is it appealing? Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you think is going to be a challenge for mm -hmm. R as a culture? Uh, so far, I. I don't really have any problems with the, the culture in our, especially, you know, when you talk about the art development mailing list, you know, sometimes there are, there were battles and things like that in, in the mailing list. But, Passionate people. Yep, yep, yeah. Just to clarify, I don't hate anybody, <laughs> you know. You, you battle against your wife just because you love her, right? Yeah. We love R, so we, we sometimes we don't, dis, uh, we don't agree with each other, so we may, uh, we may have some <laughs> you know, furious uh, messages in the, in the list. But just, just, just to clarify, we all love R, and that is the reason for the battles. No, I, yeah. I agree, and it's actually really nice to see that, because that does come out, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it comes out that this this programming language in this environment is fortunate to have a passionate community that yep. genuinely, genuinely loves it. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, changing topics real quick, you work for our studio, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, can you describe your role at our studio? Uh, uh, currently, I'm basically I'm working on the Shiny package, oh, and cool. occasionally I still, of course, maintain the Knitter package and the other, other packages. Knitter actually uh, very recently has gotten very tightly integrated into our studio. Mm -hmm. uh, things that previously required some level of magic mm -hmm. uh, now are very, very easy. You just mm -hmm. sort of push a button. Uh, the PDF yep. construction is beautiful. Yep. The, uh, the the HTML and people are doing neat things with the mm -hmm. Knitter Bootstrap and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What excites you about where our studio and the organization can take packages like Shiny and mm -hmm. uh, Knitter? Yeah, I think it's very, very important to get the support in, uh, in a nice uh, uh, graphical user interface. You know, some people just don't get it. Oh, you can just load that package and call that <laughs> function. That is, that is so easy to do, but it, the fact is not. Many users just like just pushing a button to get a report, and that, that is very easy for them to do. And I think it's super more important to get the support in the graphical user interface. I, I I agree. I think, uh, you know, I know how to load a package. Mm -hmm. I know how to type yep. knit to, you know, knit to right. HTML. Right. But there's something really comforting about being able to push the button and knowing that it's part of the mm -hmm. RStudio approved workflow, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, so your workflow as a programmer, uh, can you talk to me about sort of the tools that you use as a programmer and, and how you work? Mm. Uh, basically, I'm just using I'm just using the R Studio IDE almost okay. all the day, and you know, I switched from Emacs to R Studio like two years ago. Really? Yeah, just I don't want to offend the Emacs users. No. Emacs is good. Yeah. yeah but uh, because I just work um, primarily uh, using R, so that's why I switched to R Studio. Otherwise, you know, Emacs supports a lot of other languages. It might be a good choice to stay in that I'm a world. I'm Vim user. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, so <laughs> okay. there's a line. Uh -huh. um, so you're working on Shiny also. Mm -hmm. I think Shiny is one of the most interesting new developments mm -hmm. because it's really, it's about communication. Yep. Right? Shiny, yep. knitter to a degree, but really mm -hmm. Shiny is, is the next evolution in how do we communicate the hard work of, of the entire data process That's right. externally to the organization. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about a little bit about Shiny and about sort of the philosophy behind it and mm -hmm. in particular what you're hoping to accomplish mm -hmm. with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, sometimes uh, the the user interface is really important. It exposes the the nice features of the underlying language to to the users. As right? so you can, so, uh, th there are tasks that that tasks that are easy to do with an R script, but if you present what your R script can do using a nice user interface, then it, it will it will almost uh, almost surely uh, get popular i mean yeah, yeah you know shiny is, can be used to uh, build a, a user user interface in your web browser and the, the users will not see r running there r, r is running in the background and what you can see is just a, a bunch of buttons and uh, select uh, select lists or text boxes or things like that uh, so i think it's interesting that there's sort of been this movement to help R move towards the browser, mm -hmm. you know, with the understanding that the browser really is the deployment platform of now and right. the future. Right. Um, you know, I, I had the fortune of speaking with JJ Allaire about this yesterday, mm -hmm. and you know, it was a very courageous thing yep. to decide to go just directly for the browser. Mm -hmm. uh, have you experienced any particular challenges in supporting uh, browsers, or is is the tooling such that you're able to really concentrate and get your work done? Mm, I, in my opinion, the browser or the web is really the the, the future. I mean, but uh, I guess there are still some challenges to the to the web browsers, such as, for example, you when you draw plots, you you cannot really have like millions of points in the web browser. Yeah. But I think these things will will change in the, in the future. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's hardware accelerated canvases and all that. So yeah. fortunately, yeah, sure. there's lots of people working yeah. on it. WebGL. Yep. Oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> WebGL. So you know, you're in a fortunate position now. You're an mm -hmm. expert R developer. You have a lot of experience with it. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, so two experiments. If you could go back in time to when mm -hmm. you first started being mm -hmm. an art developer, mm -hmm. what advice would you give yourself back then? Um, I really don't know because you know the way that I learned art uh, was just basically flipping through the help uh, pages. Or <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't really uh, read any any books on art, but I guess that that's that's not really a, an efficient way to to learn art. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if there's uh, some advice that I can give to my past self. I mean, I, I should have discovered some fun parts of R earlier. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, and the converse is, you know, uh, somebody watching this video might just be starting their journey in R now mm -hmm. in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, with your experience, what advice would you give them today about mm -hmm. becoming either a part of the community, a mm -hmm. competent data scientist, an R developer, or mm -hmm. really anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the first thing that I would recommend is if you want to learn R, start with graphics instead of the traditional programming, you know, the for loops, the if statement, these are just boring stuff to get started. <laughs> right, play with graphics. And the second uh, uh, suggestion is uh, I have been using as, uh, uh, GitHub for mm -hmm. for a long time. I guess that's a really nice platform to play with. So go register on GitHub. GitHub didn't pay me, just to clarify. <laughs> uh, get, uh, just uh, put your packages on GitHub so that other people can can view, can contribute, and that's a really nice way to to. Uh, 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 expose your packages to the to the public. You know, when I was developing Nitter, there have been like more than 50 pull requests on, on GitHub. Oh, wow. So yeah, you know, it's very easy to include other people's contribution in, in your project. It's just a matter of click clicking that button to merge their patch into my repository. Cool. That's yeah. that's pretty great advice, honestly, mm -hmm. for R or really for any development. Mm -hmm. um, so. Is there anything else that I haven't asked you that you want to talk about? Uh, I guess uh, probably no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much for your All time, right. you. Thank you.